This is the Tom Hartman Program. 15 minutes past the hour. Back with your thoughts on what's going on today. The earth is still shaking along the East Coast, only metaphorically. Let me give you a quick recap of the things that you missed in the first hour of the program. Uh, we had Kevin Camps on, who is the radioactive waste watchdog over at beyondnuclear.org, about the fact that the northern, the North Anna nuclear power plant in Virginia was, you know, relatively close to the epicenter of yesterday's earthquake, which we experienced live and on television. And uh, this is built on a major earthquake fault. It turns out back in the 1990s, in order to save money, it was part of a budget cut, they removed the earthquake sensors from the plant, number one. Number two, the plant is designed to withstand uh, an earthquake up to 6.1 magnitude. And we had a 5.8 yesterday, gulp. And number three, something I didn't know, plant draws its water, its cooling water, without which it will go into a meltdown. It draws it out of a lake that is created by a dam downstream that is considered one of the most at-risk dams for rupture in the United States. And should that dam rupture and that river start flowing downstream, the water levels in the lake will pretty much vanish. It'll turn back into a river and the nuclear power plant will not be able to cool itself. Bad news. And in the midst of that bad news, we've got a hurricane heading our way. Maybe. It looks like probably. And if yesterday's earthquake weakened that dam, and they are frantically trying to figure that out right now because the dam already was considered one of the most at-risk dams in the United States. If it weakened that dam, and then you dump a couple hundred million gallons of water in the backside of it from the massive uh, rain, rainfall and flooding that will accompany the arrival of a hurricane in Washington, D.C., or in, in Virginia, in, in the environs nearby, then we could have a hell of a mess, to put it lightly. Okay, that was one of the things that we... That we ...a tale of history with a personal twist. I recently sat down with author Esmeralda Santiago. Here's our conversation. Set in the 1800s, the new epic novel Conquistadora tells two coming-of-age stories, one of its heroine, Ana Cubillas, the daughter of Spanish aristocrats who becomes head of a plantation in the New World, and the other of Puerto Rico itself. Its author, Esmeralda Santiago, came to the United States from Puerto Rico when she was 13. She's author of the memoirs When I Was Puerto Rican, Almost a Woman and the Turkish Lover, and the novel America's Dream, and she joins me now. Welcome. Thank you. Now, this is an ambitious, big story. Did you set out with the idea of telling such an ep so much scope? Uh, well, I, I started out by trying to understand my ancestors, because I come from... Your own ancestors. My own ancestors. I, I come from poor, landless peasants who left no records. And so I began to, to read the story of Puerto Rico. And the more I read the story, the more I realized I would never find my own ancestors, but I could make my imaginary ancestors, and so the book emerges as a result of my trying to uh, to create them, to create the people that, that might have been. So did you know much of the history before that? Not as much. I left when I was 13, and so whatever I learned in Puerto Rico in the schools, that's all I, that's all I remembered about the history. But um, the, the older I became, the more curious I was, and so I, I uh, would buy books about the history which I would brought, bring back to the United States whenever I went there. And, uh, and so I, I owned a lot of it, and I didn't read all of it until I was, became completely obsessed with the idea of finding my roots. Now tell me about the, this uh, main, the heroine, Anna. You, you, there was an interview I read where you said, I worried I was creating a character who would have been impossible in that time and that place. And yet 
There she is, And there right? she is. Yeah. Well, I do believe that women like that existed. I just don't think we have any records about them. Um, one, they really didn't write. They were too busy <laughs> doing what mm. they needed to do. And secondly, the literature uh, in the 19th century in Puerto Rico, 99 percent was written by men. And, uh, and women were just kind of sitting around embroidering most of the time in mm. their books. So, um, so I knew that women like this existed. We just uh, hadn't heard about them. And so I had to create someone who was like was a 19th century woman but also who was modern a 19th century woman who runs a plantation and and therefore has to deal with one of the overarching themes historically and in your novel slavery yes and she um when she comes to puerto rico she knew she had heard of course that there there was slavery but it wasn't until she was there living among the slaves that she really understood what it meant and she had to she had a lot of conflicts about it but um, she managed to get over it because she kept thinking to herself, I have to do this, I have to work, I have to continue my work here, and, uh, and these were my tools. And that's, that's how she envisioned the slaves, were as the tools that she needed. Well, what about for you? I, I think you, you felt the need to explore this history, yeah. obviously, it's particularly slavery. Yes, well, you know, obviously I come from uh, African descendants at some point. My mm -hmm. dad is very dark, my mom is very fair. So I know that somewhere along the lines of my, on my uh, father's side, at least, there would, would have been Africans. Um, and so I wanted to know who they were and how, how they lived and, and what happened to them. And it was difficult. I have to admit that when I was reading the history, and, and then when writing about it, I went through the, the entire gamut of emotions from shame, embarrassment, to, to rage, anger, to also just admiration that they survived under the circumstances that they actually lived. We're, of course, not going to walk through the whole story no. <laughs> here, but, but I'm curious, um, when you go back and you look at the history and then you create this, does it have rever reverberations for today? What did well, you learn about yourself and about our society and about Puerto Rico today? Right. Well, you know, it, it's really interesting that that I, I became I be. I started this with with the question, how did we become Puerto Ricans? And uh, and of course the first question is who are the people? And the people were very very mixed from, not just from Spain. People think you know we all came from Spain. No, there were people from. Ireland, from Germany, from Italy, we we are just a real mixture with with the uh, native population and with uh, the Africans, and so that was really exciting to read just how how mixed we are, um, and and um, and how many different cultures uh, came to our little island and made Puerto Rico what it is. Um, I also. I also did. I didn't know the history, so it was it was very poignant for me because I realized, you know, at my age, I know more about American history than I did about the history of my mm. island, and uh, and that was where embarrassment and shame <laughs> <laughs> mixed, uh, but also joy in the the possibilities of learning about about my ancestors and knowing just a little bit more about me. Speaking of you, there is another part of this personal story which I didn't know about till recently, but I gather when you were finishing this, you had a stroke. Yes. And you lost your ability to, to read, read or and write. write. Yes, for, for about a year. Uh, and I had to um, I had to teach myself how to read and write relearn. all over again. I had wow. to relearn it. And, and I did it. The, I, if I had not come to the United States at 13, if I had not had to learn the language, uh, I would have not realized that it was very much the same experience. When I first came here, I knew the alphabet. I would look at a book, and the words made no sense because it was a language I couldn't understand. Oh, so you, re you were relearning now the I way you learned at 13. Yeah, it was comprehension. Yeah. My stroke completely affected mm. comprehension. And so even though I knew that the things were written and they made sense, they didn't make sense to me. And so I began by reading children's books all over again, wow. <laughs> as I did uh, when I first came, and uh, trying to connect the words to the objects. And uh, little by little, I relearned it. And, and, and now you're OK? I'm OK. I was able to finish the book. <laughs> <laughs> and you're here with us. And here I am. <laughs> and, and, and one last thing. Did I read correctly? This is the first of a, a trilogy? Is, that, is well, there more I, planned here? I, there are, there's more planned, because the history was so fascinating, and these characters continue to uh, to, to emerge into my imagination and to talk to me. And so I would love to write another book that, that uh, includes some of these characters, not all of them, and that continues the history of Puerto Rico and how we became who we are.
All right, the book is Conquistadora, Esmeralda Santiago. Nice to talk to you. Very nice to see you, thank you. Thank you.